on a magnificent Friday afternoon. How's everyone doing? It's the Teddy Bear and welcome to Night Tracks Radio. And today's artist spotlight, Grammy nominated singer, songwriter, entertainer, extraordinaire, Lord have mercy. And she is definitely captivating. The super talented Sarah Day is joining us today as we have the privilege to discuss and talk about her new hit single, Catch Me If I Fall, featuring and produced by the legendary Chucky Booker. My queen, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you so much. Blessings, <laughs> thanks for having me. Oh, the pleasure is ours. You have been a very busy young lady, <laughs> and I'm surprised <laughs> with the live performances. And I'm trying to understand is when did you find the opportunity to get in the studio and put this record together? Well, it was actually um, five years in the making since I connected with Chucky Booker. And um, he's of course a musical director for Lionel Richie. And so he's a very busy man on the road a lot. And uh, at the time was doing a show with um, in Vegas. So um, I was trying to connect with him and I was actually working on my visa to uh, stay in America because I'm from Canada. Right. And I'm on a visa as an extraordinary singer songwriter. So which is a, is a big deal to, you know, uh, to get. And uh, it's, it's a big workload, too. So I was in the middle of that and, um, I, you know, just trying to connect and the timing was just all about the timing. Uh, so you know, we kept on saying, oh, we're going to make it happen. We're going to get together. And then sure enough, he walked by uh, my booth at NAMM. I was performing at the conference in Anaheim. And uh, that's when he saw me singing. Live. Okay. It was like, Sarah Day. And I was like, Jackie Booker. And, it, you know, then we were in person and he heard me <laughs> live and then it was like, okay, we got to get this session. We got to, we got to get together finally. And, uh, you know, I was coming up doing my thing new in America as well. And, um, just, uh, you know, needing to have all my ducks in line, you know, I wanted before I met up with them too. So when we met, it was just perfect timing, uh, that, you know, I had, you know, I just bought a car and everything so I could drive to the session and get to where I need to go. And, you know, just, uh, it was just the right timing, you know, so very grateful. And uh, it's, yeah, it was super exciting. We we banged out the song in a day. Really? Yeah, we really, like, we just had such an incredible, um, you know, flow and connection. And he really allowed me to uh, just express myself in, in the writing, you know, and I created such a beautiful track that was very natural for me to just, you know, the ideas started flowing and he just happened to love everything he was doing. You know, the wonderful, the, the wonderful thing that I've had the pleasure of conversing with so many great artists like yourself, the creative process and the, how important it is to have the right producer to elevate you to another level, actually being able to bring the best yeah. out of you and it seems to me working with chucky he was able to do that and one of the things that i love about the record is that it's smooth but it also has a very raw rough edge about it and i love that was that your intention when you started working on the recording process working on the new single yeah well i mean Pretty much so. It was very natural because uh, I was coming from like a, yeah, like a, a really raw place, you know what I mean? Like just in my emotions and feeling like, you know, this whole, you know, cat and mouse thing that men and women do, you know? Right. And, um, it, I don't know. It just like, honestly, it was so natural. It just, it just like came out of me, you know what I mean? Like it just, it just was a, a flow, like, it happened so fast. Like we literally, I, you know, just wrote the first verse. What do you think about this? And he was, you know, I love it. It sounds great. You know, do it, put it down, you know? And then I would, and then Lana Ritchie called in the middle of our session 
And I'm like, he's like, I gotta take this call. It's the boss. And I'm like, of course, no worries. Like, go for it. Like, I totally get it. And I'm just like, let me right. just. And he left the track running. So that's when I, when I kept writing. And then when he came back, I was like, I have something. And then, you know, and I'm like tiptoeing around, like I have something with, you know, because I'm working with like one of the best, you know what I mean? He's worked with everybody. And I was so honored and touched uh, that he, you know, felt so confident in me to, to let me just do my thing. And, um, and so then I wrote like the spoken word kind of part, you know, and came up with that kind of vibe and he, and he and he just really was like you're dope like this is you know I love it put it down you know and it just kind of flowed like that um of course he had the idea created the track which was so beautiful when you have a producer that arranges it you can hear the melodies almost you know what I mean like it just kind of naturally came and uh and it was just it was a really beautiful experience I've never work with someone who, like you said, just, you know, brought it out in me, allowed me, and really just gave me a platform, just was like, go for it, you know, and um, the, the chorus, of course, um, you know, that was the idea, Catch Me If I Fall, and uh, the the intro he had as well, that, that cool little part, um, and it was just, yeah, it was just, he, it was very thought out, you know, exactly what he had in mind, of course, he saw me perform and I do my little thing, you know, I've got my little sex swag and <laughs> I'm, I'm a dancer uh, first. So when I'm right. on stage, I move and I dance and I wind up, you know, because I grew up with like Jamaicans and Trinidadians and Bayesian. And so I always had this like, you know, little waist wine thing going on. So he was like, you need a sexy song. There you, you know? go. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm all about the sexy, you know. But it's like sexy, classy, but sassy, you know? Right. And, I think uh, a lot of, oh, I'm sorry, go right ahead, go right ahead. No, no, no. I just, it was just, like I said, just came out very natural. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I find very unique and very special is that when you're working with someone like Chucky, what makes it unique is that he was an artist first and he made that transition to becoming a producer. And I think that gives him a very special, unique perspective when he's working with another artist because he understands the other yeah. artist. And I've been given a few of your live performances to view and the amount of energy and the level of transparency that you display in raw motion that you display and your live performances are incredible. And I would like to know, and I know a lot of the fans would like to know, how long does it take to come off of that kind of high after a performance like that? All night. <laughs> I'm always the last one at the club or the, the venue. I'm always, and I'm always like, hey, now I want to have a drink. Everybody's leaving, you know? Um, yeah, I'm always up to like, five, six in the morning, you know, after a show, like it's, it's a process. Yeah. Cause you just, you given all this energy and it is, it's like, you're on a high and just, you know, you exude um, all this passion and, uh, and, you know, excitement really. Cause I just love what I do. Like, I'm so grateful to share, you know, my soul on stage, you know what I mean? And it's right. not, healing for me, but it's, I know that it's healing for others that share with me. And I just feel so honored and, and blessed to do what I do. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's, it definitely is a process because I do, I give it all. <laughs> I give you it all. You really do. You yeah. really do. You know, in the words of the late great Walt Disney, he used to always say, it's a small world after all. And speaking of that, you've had an, you've had an opportunity to travel around this globe and perform. And I wanted to ask you, being a veteran of this industry and having the ability to show such a level of transparency through your music, do you find it somewhat therapeutic to, be, to give the listeners and give supporters 
a little bit of a more of an inside peek behind the curtain on who Sarah Day is. Oh, definitely. I, I, I'm excited about that, too, because it's a journey. You know, it's really a process. And um, my story is unbelievable, honestly. Like, there's so much of it that is like people would not believe I, where I come from, where I've been, what I've been through. You know, it's a, a lot of times they look at me and it's like they just see a woman that like a strong attractive maybe woman you know and uh they have no idea that like my child my upbringing and everything that i've been through i i take that to the stage and that's where this you know this this heart and soul and, and you know when i sing from my gut it's because i've been through a lot you know <clears throat> and i use it one to heal myself and uh and you know and just let out a lot so I don't hold anything, you know? Um, and then just to uplift people. That's that's the biggest thing I love to, most of the stuff I write is, you know, uplifting. Uh, and other than that, it's sometimes about love, you know? And it can be about love of, you know, anyone in your life a lot of times too, depending on how, who the listener is and how you perceive it, you know? I like to write like that, but, um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's just such a, I, I know I actually teach as well. I teach at uh, Culver City Middle School here in LA. Okay. Uh, okay. And I mentor young, you know, artists. And I love to share that with them, like enjoy the journey, you know, really like just keep an eye on, you know, always where you're coming from and where you're going where you want to be and how you're going to get there. And then also like, look how far I came. Yeah. You know? And even if it's like from the day before, you know, it's like a step, a, you know what I mean? Like one foot in front of the other, but uh, it's pretty amazing when I look back. Cause you know, there, there definitely is a lot of haters too in this business. Oh, yeah. Without question. Without question. <clears throat> and and, you know, it's also male dominated, which can be very tough for a lot of us women and uh, most of us women in this business. So um, just knowing who you are is so important and being grounded and, uh, you know, confident and loving yourself and knowing who you are and what you're doing. Just keeping that, you know, and also educating yourself so that nobody can tell you or make you feel intimidated because you're going to know because the knowledge is power. Right. So the more that I get, you know, somebody coming at me in a certain way with the business or whatever, just fires me up to learn more, to educate myself so that I can answer, you know, and know exactly what this one or that one's talking about. So I can go down the right path, you know. Right. Without question, like Maurice White once said, we yearn to learn. Lord have mercy. And for yeah. those who are tuning in late, shame on you. But the teddy bear does forgive you. We're being joined by the super talented, the Lord, entertainer extraordinaire. Sarah Day is joining us today. Of course, our new hit single, Catch Me If I Fall. I want to know, and I know a lot of the listeners would like to know, when did Sarah know? At what age did you really know this is what you wanted to do? Well, it's kind of interesting because I, I have, I kind of joke around about it all the time, but I say I have like a J-Lo story because I started yes. off as a professional dancer first. Oh, okay. So I was training since I was three and I always knew that I wanted to be an entertainer and I was from very young, but I was on stage dancing. So I was, uh, and eventually I was backing a lot of artists, you know, just like J-Lo was on, you know, on, uh, and Living Color, or, you know, and right. uh, whatever the show she was on. And um, so I did, I danced for the top hip hop dance company in Canada called Do That. And okay. I went to musical okay. theater college. But when I went to musical theater college, I was like, I'm a dancer and I sing and I act, you know, because you had to be a triple threat to audition to get in. Right. Uh, basically, I got in, but then my casting director, uh, basically the biggest casting directors in Toronto and Canada were my teachers. 
And they were like, oh, no, you need to focus on that voice you have because you can get lead roles as a principal with a lead voice like that. And then you can dance and you can act. Because as a dancer, most of the time you're behind the scenes, you know, where you're like part of the production. So I was like, really? Like, I didn't even know that I had the voice I had, but I grew up singing with my dad, played guitar and sang, you know. So I always sang, but I didn't know until I was in college that I wanted to be a singer. Okay. I, I started when that um, musical director told me that, and a few other teachers too, I basically went out and started booking gigs. I got a guitar player and I started cross promoting all of my friends that were singers, get them to my gig so that I could feature and have all their fan bases coming out to my shows too. And I just built and they were like, we didn't know you sang. And I was like, well, now you do. <laughs> so, and it just, and it just kind of, I didn't stop. I just, from there, I just, I worked all over Toronto. And then eventually I got an opportunity to uh, go to Malaysia on a three month contract. And um, it was a really cool gig because I got to do what I wanted to do. Like I got to remix songs over like a UK DJ with a percussionist from Colombia, sax player from Canada and a guitarist from the Maldives. Wow. They're on stage and it would be like the DJ be, you know, and she was doing vinyl at the time and she would like play a track. Next thing you know, the sax player would come up and jam on it. Next thing I would come up and dance and sing with the sax and re and then maybe I'd remix like a Sade track over, you know, the instrumental or I do like original music and we just switch it up. It was like a jam session. It was like a live jam session all the time. And um, I did, you know, work with the DJ to kind of, arrange you know some songs and some originals but it was really cool it was like that was the dopest like first gig overseas you know and then from there i got opportunities you know for bookings and in three months turned into five years <laughs> in five countries <laughs> that's a lot of traveling but being able to bring that kind of i call it unity through music because music speaks to us all on yeah. so many different levels. Um, I want to take you back to your childhood in Canada. Most people that have not had the opportunity to go to Canada, they don't really understand the music scene out there is huge. Yeah. Dance, hall, music, pop, R&B, hip hop. <clears throat> it's like one big kaleidoscope, a melting pot of yeah. music. But you decided to leave and come over here to the States and I wanted to ask you, have they been more receptive here in the States than they have been as far as Canada, as far as the audience, the record buying audience, since we've changed so dramatically where everything is streaming now, where we no longer have music stores anymore? Right. Well, honestly, um, I've been gone from Canada so long because <laughs> I left for Asia. I went mm -hmm. over there. And I came right to America. I didn't really, I didn't plan to come here. Um, it just kind of happened. I have a friend that was, uh, you know, in LA saying, you gotta come check out LA, you know, you know, and I was overseas and, you know, it's tropical paradise over there. <laughs> so I was like, I can't do the winter anymore. I wanted to move to New York. Uh, Cause I just love New York vibes and, you know, right. like those vibes and the music. Um, you know, the R&B, the funk, the jazz coming out of New York and and just the whole scene, the East Coast, you know, vibes. But I could not do the winter. I said, that's it, you know. And I said, let me check out it. <laughs> I came over here and uh, once I came out and jammed to some of these spots, like I, I was here actually in Marina Del Rey in uh, the warehouse. It was the first gig I ever sat in with my boy. And it was pretty much African-American crowd. And they were like, what? <laughs> I got like a standing over. They were like, you got to do another song. And I was like, I like America. <laughs> I was like, I like this. Because, you know, I got 
soul. So they were like, Where, where'd this girl come from with all this soul? You know, so, but I mean, I love Toronto. I'm born and raised there. I feel so grateful for the culture that I was raised around because my building that I was raised in was Jamaican, Trinidadian, Guyanese. We'd have like Punjab, Indian music, Punjab, and then mm -hmm. hip reggae dance hall off the balconies because I was in like apartment building. Right. Apartment building, you know, kind of government housing vibes. Um, my parents divorced when I was young. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, I was in the hood. It was a hood in Canada, <laughs> but it's still different, but it's still, you know, and uh, the music just influenced me so much. Then my parents both had like, you know, amazing record collections, Motown and all that. But yeah, the industry, I mean, you know, there's just so much talent in Toronto. I was surrounded by incredible singers. I was surrounded by incredible musicians. And I feel like even as me as a dancer coming up, I would be live at their shows, dancing right in front. My ears were just soaking it up. You know what I mean? So I feel so blessed that I was raised there. And um, you know, the music industry, yes, has changed so much. Uh, but as you know, Drake put us on the map in a whole next level, you know? And uh, there's so much going on there. Yeah, it's, it, it's a beautiful thing. I'm definitely looking forward to doing stuff more back home and connecting again. You know, I, I went back home to do my single release because uh, I wanted to be there for my birthday and then be, just be with my family and friends and people that saw me come up and be in my city because it's where I'm from. I'm so proud and I definitely represent. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a whole different uh, ball game now. But I'm definitely getting a lot of support. And, um, you know, I'm about this International Women's Day. That's what I'm about. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about being international, but I will always, you know, I will always represent Toronto. And by the way, my hood is called Rexdale. <laughs> okay. All right. You heard it here first, family. <laughs> <laughs> Rexdale, yeah, in the house. Oh, my goodness. You know what? One of the things that I truly love about your personality is so engaging and you bring that same type of personality on stage in your performances where you make the listeners feel like a part of a, a family. I call it a musical church family. Amen. Yeah. In your, yeah. <laughs> in your Amen. performances. But you said something earlier that I want to touch upon female artists in the music industry and the disparaging as far as pay, um, sexism, uh, not being treated fairly. And I wanted to ask you, you've been doing this for a minute. Do you think things have improved? I'll go back. Let's go back all the way from 19, let's say 85 from 1985 to where we're at right now. Do you think the industry, has become more receptive and more respectful toward female artists? I definitely think there's been growth for sure. There's been okay. movement and growth, um, but we still have a long way to go, man. We have a long yeah. way to go. And I see some of these actresses talking about it too. And um, it's to me, it's very shocking. Well, we're in 2024 and uh, to be honest, a lot of things, even the state of America right now, what's going on here, mm -hmm. like, I mean, just, you know, across the board, it's it's, it's crazy times, you know, and um, we need to definitely step it up. I mean, I this year really wanted to make a conscious effort to use more women in every type of business. Right. Raise us, you know, to to lift up each other. You know what I mean? We have to work together and create our own so that right. we don't have to answer to the men. <laughs> why don't we why don't we own the businesses? Why don't we own the labels? Why don't we support ourselves, make our own movement, right? So that's again empowering ourselves and educating ourselves, making sure we're prepared. And then coming up with the business plans, coming up with the funding, you know, like just doing it ourselves. 
I've been a do-it-yourself artist from day one. Everything online you see, I did. From my makeup, hair, design, website, photo shoots, musical directing my band, hiring my band, at the show, I'm doing it all, you know? Own my own sound system, do my own sound most of the time, unless I got, you know, I'm blessed with great engineer and a certain type of level of show, that's great. Right. But, you know what I mean? Like, um, I think the more that we can do ourselves, the more empowering it is, the more we can teach the young ones as well coming up, not to depend on, you know, and have to, uh, if you can do it yourself, you, you're just a step ahead, you know? Absolutely. If, if I had to pay for everything that that I've done, there's no way I'd be here. <laughs> there's no way, you know what I mean? I have to pay for the photographer and this and you know I did a lot of bartering you know because I'm a right. really, I'm a really good connector I connect people and I and I help you know I love helping I'm a giver um, but what we need to do as women too is make sure we get our finders fee and that we make sure that we you know we're helping but it's also a business right yeah. so I'm very kind I'm the Canadian nice girl right but I also have to put my foot down and be stern like hey you know that's a 20 percent. that's you know whatever percentage whatever finders fee you know right it's taking me time to uh you know build that kind of chutzpah whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know right. to uh you know put my foot down and and demand that you well know? you definitely have a whole lot of hoops to hoops <laughs> you have such a you have such an edge to you. And I wanted to ask you, I can tell from the brief time that we've had an opportunity to converse with one another, you are definitely a perfectionist. And I can tell that you are your biggest critic. And I got to ask you, how many times after a performance, you went back and watched the performance to see what things you could have done better, things you could have improved on, or things that you wanted to take out or possibly implement in a next live show? You know what? I don't do that. Really? I don't. I let it go. Let it go. Okay. When I perform, okay. it's done. Okay. And then on to the next one. And when I'm editing video and stuff like that, I go through, and I, of course, I've listened to myself over the years. You know, you have to listen to yourself and right. make sure you like what you're hearing, make sure, you know. Yeah, I'm not hard on myself. Like I, I know a lot of people are really hard on themselves, and that could really quickly lead to like depression and questioning, the insecurities and stuff, especially in this business, because we hear a lot of no's. We hear a yeah. lot of, you know, critique or um, this is the way the music business is. And this is the way you got to do it. You got to do it this way. How are you doing that? Or what you doing? You can't sing like that. You're white, you know, or you, you how do you sound like you're black? Or you know, crazy things I've heard. And I'm right. like, I'm in my own lane doing me. There you go. I believe that when I'm done on stage, I leave it on the stage. And I'm ready for the next performance. And I just work on being better all the time. You know what I mean? All yeah. you can do is do your best. So every, I know that I give my best every time because it's important to me for that the person to have the best experience come into my show. And then I can bless them. And I'm just really, like you said earlier, very raw with it and very truthful with it. Um, and it's a lot of moving parts. So sometimes I feel like, you know, God, if I only had, you know, more time to prepare the music because I'm doing so much of the business right. and behind the scenes and organizing the show and dealing with my musicians and all that kind of stuff that I wish that I you know, I had so much more time to like have more rehearsals and, you know, maybe I want to do this other song or this other song, but I got to make sure the band knows that we don't have rehearsal time. So I guess I'm not going to do that song today. I'm going to do, that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you just, you just do what you can, you know, right. good about it. Like, I just, I don't know. I think that I'm very, very, I'm very grateful that I'm very blessed to have a very optimistic, naturally optimistic um, outlook 
And since I was a kid, I've been like that because I was always like, I'm not going to stay in the hood. I'm not going to get pregnant at 15. I'm not going to like, you know, become an alcoholic. I'm not going to, and it, it just, all those things gave me more motivation to be better. Right. So I've always used that, you know, those kind of things. So even if I see I make a mistake, I don't make, I don't, I don't get hard on myself. I'm just like, okay, I made a mistake. Now I'm going to just try not to do that next time. You know what I mean? Right. What do I got to do? So maybe I need to breathe more. I need to practice. Tra- you know, maybe I need to warm up more. Maybe I need to speak less before my show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe I need to like sleep more. <laughs> right. You know, you just do what you can, you know? I can definitely um, relate to that. You know, it seems to me everything comes to you in a very natural, organic manner. And that's that's refreshing because, you know, as you just stated earlier, you know, in this business we call music, it can be tedious. It can take its toll yeah. on someone if you don't have an equal balance in your yeah. life. But I got to ask, you know, you you've teased us with a slice of cheesecake with this new hit single, of course. Catch me if I fall. What else can we expect from you this year? Are we going to get an EP? We're going to get some other singles. We definitely would like to know so we can help promote your music. Yes, thank you. Well, speaking of natural, I have a song uh, that I'm finishing with Narda Michael Walton, and it's called Natural High. Okay, okay. Yeah, that that was really cool, um, the way we even started to work together um, and... I came up with the title, you know, he asked me, like, give me five titles, you know, and something, oh my goodness, what am I going to give Narda Michael Walden? You know, he's (laughs) with me, you know, so many hits and just in his own right, uh, incredible drummer, you know, iconic entertainers work with everybody. And um, so anyway, but he's super humble and sweet. That's the one thing I'll say is these guys that are the best, they're the most humble, they're the most kind and the most giving. Um, and they don't got to talk the Hollywood talk, you know, right. so I'm very blessed that way. Um, so I have the news, I have a, uh, that single coming out. Um, well it's being finished right now okay. and okay. called all right that I written previously. It was, um, the tail end of COVID. Um, and that's going to be the next single. Okay. Um, I wrote that with, uh, William Lee. He goes by Papa Lee. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Pop, Papa Lee. He's um, actually managing Cat Williams and Lunell. Oh, okay. Okay. And he's been in the music business, a songwriter for a while. Um, we have about five songs together. We just write incredibly together. Um, a Christmas song you got to check out as well that we have. It's already out. But that new, that next song is called All Right. Chucky loved it so much that he actually got it mastered for me. Oh my so, goodness, that's wonderful. Now, yeah, now that Chucky's single, now that our single came out and the production's so great, now I told him, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I want to go back and I want to mix this again <laughs> because I got I to keep it up to your par. You know, it's got to be like next level. So he's like, I get it. I got it. Okay. So he said, don't worry, we'll get it mastered again. So I'm, I'm taking it to my boy who's like incredible, works with. It's it's either my boy that does J Lo and uh, the Super Bowl and everybody you know he's doing incredible things Kevin Teasley uh, or my other boy David Ott who's also working with uh, Bootsy and all the baddest so um, that's exciting and then on top of that I have an EP that's live with my band that's been in the works for years um, it's been in the kind of the background because in between all the expenses of everything. My visas that cost like six grand just to renew um, every f- few years just to be in America. It's a crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just being out here in L.A., you know, it's expensive and putting everything into my music. So it's been a process. But Stacy Lamont Sidner, who is a musical director for the Jacksons, he's my drummer and my MD for the last 12 years. Okay. And friend. He's helping me um, produce it, and uh, it's almost done. So we're just finishing all the instrumentation, 
And then I just kind of finished uh, the vocals, do some backgrounds and stuff. And I'll be selling that at my shows. I'll be submitting that for, excuse me, for uh, festivals, you know. Okay. okay. I wanted a representation of what I do live. And it's basically like a um, six of my, uh, my, my singles, uh, actually my, all of my original music that I've been touring with over the years, my okay. family. And it's with my bass player who sadly passed away just a little while ago um, in a very bad car accident, devastating us all in the industry. Um, John Stewart, he was with me for 13 years. Wow. And he's on the record. So I just got to get it out and get it done. It's been a, a labor of love. But it will be very raw and, and live. And, um, you know, all these songs over the years playing all over L.A. and Vegas and internationally have become different babies, you know, with my band. So right. I'm putting that out as well. So there's lots of good stuff coming up. I'm really excited. And, and Chucky and I are about to go back in the studio and do a few more. And we're going to do like some funk. <laughs> we're do some funk. <laughs> Wait, I'm excited. You already know. You already know. Oh, I, I could tell that's going to be a very magical experience. But I want you to consider this home. This is your home away from home. Whatever you need, please don't hesitate to Thank let you. me know. I have all the love and respect for you. I know it is. People don't really truly understand the challenging aspect of being an independent artist because it works both ways because you have you have complete control over your career, over your music. The buck stops with you. But also, as you said, a lot of times you get so caught up in the business aspect is that a lot of times it, it's not enough hours in a day to really do everything yeah, for that sure. you need to have them. But that's why I'm here. So no need to fear. We, we got you. And to get all the latest updates, make sure you step by Sarah's official website. That's at sarahday.com at the website. Her music is there to purchase. Also, you can connect with her on all her social media outlets. It was an honor to have you on, my queen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All the love and support. And I'm excited. I will be sharing as well. And I'm also uh, sending Chucky Booker your way. Okay, well, we appreciate We would love to have him on. I know my uh, program director was telling me, we well, said, hey, look, you really need to check out Sarah. I said, Sarah, who's Sarah Day? I said, she's bad. I'm like, okay. He knows how I am. And he uh, sent me over some music. And I said, oh, she can wobble. She can, she, she has some, she can, <laughs> she has, I said, she has some pipes on her. I said, okay. Then I'm, Seeing the, the performances, and I said, oh, she has a little bit of a, a Stevie Nicks kind of vibe in her yeah. performances. But then the thing that got the thing that really got me and really resonated with me, the level of passion that you sing with in your live performances, that's mm -hmm. what separates the good from the great. When you're able to have people in the palm of your hands and bring them along with you on that ride, it is such a rush. It's an incredible rush. And you have been able to do that. That's why I say I see nothing but great things from you in this new year. So I want you to do what you have to do. Make that funk. We Thank got you. you. We will definitely promote it. So don't even worry about it. OK. Thank you so much. And then just the last thing on Monday. I just was on stage. I got pulled up by Bobby Brown. Really? <laughs> my prerogative yeah. it was so crazy. He heard me sing. I was off to the side. I was working with uh -huh. my MP and he was gonna call me, uh, call me up, and I was gonna hand the microphone to Eric Benet. I was waiting for the opportunity, and all of a sudden the cats were on stage and they were playing like a cover. But it's so funny because the guys they, they didn't know the the, the lyrics. Right? right, and guess who knew them? There you go. <laughs> so I sang, and next thing you know, Bobby was like, he was like, <laughs> "Get your ass up on the stage now and bring it." And I was like, 
it was it was a magical moment. It was really beautiful, and it was for his fundraiser for Bobby Christina, okay. which was um, you know her birthday, and just such an honor because I'm a huge Whitney and Bobby fan. I I sang all their records coming up, so it was like a full circle moment. So well, you I, were definitely magical, my love. So don't even, you know what I got? I said you know before I before I forget, I wanted to ask you. Do you think there's a remote possibility in the future that you might put together a jazz album? I do love jazz. I actually love gospel. I want to do a gospel album eventually. Okay. Um, but um, I don't know. I'm not a straight ahead. I'm more of like a soulful. You know, I, right. I, I do want to bring jazziness to my set. Oh, you know. <laughs> but, um, I don't know about a straight ahead jazz, but. Um, but the EP is going to have like, you know, some jazzy, bluesy, even like a reggae vibe in one of the songs. Okay. Um, just like all my influences. So, okay. You know what? I say never say never. Who all knows? Right, That's the beautiful <laughs> thing about this industry. You never know where it takes you. You know, if an this opportunity comes up and I get some major, you know, jazz opportunity with a producer that's like, I want to produce you and, you know, like work with you or whatever, some major name, who knows, you know, you never know. This is but true. I really love jazz. I love, you know, I love the bluesy stuff, you know? Okay. Well, you definitely, you definitely have the temperament for it. You definitely do. And family, be sure to get the new hit single. It is available. Catch me if I fall featuring and produced by Chucky Booker. It's available right now on Apple, and if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you can always head over to Amazon.com and be sure to add it to your Spotify playlist. Thank you yeah, so much, my queen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Safe and many blessings to you, my love. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. My pleasure. Thank and you. thank you for all you're doing for all of us artists. It's so wonderful. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. The very thank super you. talented Sarah Day here on Night Tracks Radio. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and allowing the Teddy Bear to help you tune out all the negativity on this wonderful, fantabulous Friday afternoon. But hey, we're not done yet. We got a very special show for you tomorrow, of course, Saturday night. Oh, mercy. Saturday night, March the 9th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Central, and 5.30 p.m. Pacific, soulful singer, songwriter, Charles Gator Moore will be joining us tomorrow. So be sure to tune in so we get you covered. It's definitely going to be a very sexy and very smooth evening. And for those who missed the interview, no need to fear. We got you covered. You can look at and check out the interview in its entirety on a YouTube channel. There's a youtube.com forward slash night tracks radio with two X's that's on YouTube, and also you can be sure to subscribe to the channel while you're there. It's always important. Also, we're on TikTok, same handle, Night Tracks Radio, two X's, the same for Instagram, and also the artist formerly known as Twitter, we're on X, <laughs> also on X too. So make sure you tune in to get all the latest updates, which are important. I want to thank everyone once again. We look forward to seeing you live on Facebook Live tomorrow night. And as in always, Keep it soulful here on Night Trice Radio. God bless.